What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today, I am going to talk about some of the things that are on R67. I get a lot of questions pertaining to what this component is, where it's located, what its function does, and for all of you newbies out there, it's important to know so that you can maintain your truck according to your driving habits so that you can get the most longevity and problem-free ownership for the life of your Super Duty. All right, guys, let's dive in. Alright guys, thanks so much for coming back. I've been getting this question asked a lot. PTT, can you show us the stuff on the 6.7? I just bought this truck and I'm not familiar with some of the things on the engine. Well, tonight I have a brand new 21 F750. Has never been used. It's actually um, going to go get upfit for one of our customers. I think we just sold this unit. What better example, none other than a clean brand new engine to show you all exactly what we have on this. 650-750 application is a little different. We have this set up and what you guys are going to be normally accustomed to is this view. All you guys most likely have it in a pickup truck setup but for those of you that don't you might have it in a big 650-750 but when we pop our hoods this is pretty much what we're looking at. Now despite it being a different model year than my predecessor down here with the hood pop the engine configuration is pretty much the same 2011 through 2021 everything is pretty much placed in the same order except for the different configurations of the air filters if you guys remember they did a little switcheroo between the battery and the air filter and then it switched and now uh it's back in front of the battery uh just like mine but for the most part you know the egr cooler is in the same spot intakes got flopped for 2020 you guys saw on the big 650 750 the top upper intake was aluminum same thing mine has aluminum intake and the lower is plastic and then on the pickup we have an aluminum lower intake manifold and an upper plastic intake manifold so a little different configuration depending on you know what model you guys have um, but we're going to go over that that stuff for all you newbies so first and foremost pop your hood i recommend you not do this when it's hot it's going to be uh, you know, a little easier to uh, touch stuff, you know, uh, get your light down in there. You're going to be maybe wanting to kneel up here so you can see exactly what I'm talking about or just get more familiar with your, your vehicle. So uh, this particular unit, you all might gasp. The unit is a Circa 2018 with 60,000 miles on it. And the one crucial, crucial thing that us as technicians do not want to see is that dreaded original black FOMOCO oil filter. Yes, boys, I said it, the original oil filter. This truck has never had an oil change and never had fuel filters. That is disgusting. Look at this poor girl, she's crying. <laughs> but she can be repaired, but it's gonna cost a lot of money. And I want you all to be familiar with this engine right here so that you guys can be that million mile truck. There's nothing better than doing maintenance than not doing maintenance. This is just unnecessary and can totally be prevented. So when you pop your hood, both batteries are gonna be in the same location that they have pretty much always been, except for the, the fact of this one when I told you they were uh, swapping around the batteries. I know, People ask, you know, which one's the primary battery, which one's the secondary battery. Um, I myself, I really don't know which one's the primary and which one's the secondary. And in my mind, it doesn't really matter because both batteries are hooked together via this huge cable. And you guys see me do repairs on the alternator wiring that runs down along the trough and connects this here. So, I, I mean, it's just... I don't believe that there's a, a primary and secondary battery. I don't refer to them as the primary and secondary battery. Um, however, 
when you do replace these batteries, I do recommend replacing them in a pair. Um, I have had an instance and I did get burned on one. It was a battery, an electrical issue, and it wound up leaching voltage over to the battery uh, that I did not replace. So, um, word to the wise, replace the batteries. Six sevens, we got two cooling systems. One here, primary, one here, secondary. Secondary is going to be uh, all of our emission system components and the primary is gonna be the engine, the heart of everything. And uh, 11 through 16, we had orange coolant. Some 17s had orange coolant, but then they transferred over to Ford's new Motorcraft yellow coolant. There is a diluted anti-concentrated uh, blend that you guys can get. Uh, one you would have to mix with, obviously, distilled water 50-50, uh, the other not. But uh, my recommendation, you guys have saw my video that I made just like Bill over at PowerStrokeHelp.com with that whiteboard. Thought it was a cool way to get my point across with doing maintenance. Uh, make sure to check out my interval for uh, replacing the coolants and I'll link the description of the video showing how to drain both these. No big deal, no brainer. Uh, it's something that you guys can easily do uh, at your own house uh, in the driveway. Uh, minimal tools required. Classic. Same old belt, belts up in the front. Uh, we only have one belt. As you guys can see, we got dual alts up on this, on this application. All the six sevens have these coolant lines laying on top of the engine. I know it may look a little messy, but they're all going to their respective spots and um, more kind of like a, uh, like a, I think there's called like an overflow hose, um, just going to the top of the radiator. We got to the top of the degas bottle, top of the cooler, just uh, certain uh, points up here that these these go to. I have replaced them for actually leaking right there. You can kind of see little crusties, but uh, I think the hose is like a hundred bucks or something. Uh, not too bad. Air filter is definitely something you want to check. We do have this visual aid here, so we don't always have to ugh, pop the air filter housing to look at it. Although uh, to get familiar with replacing it, I recommend you removing, uh, just look at it and understand the clips and how that is supposed to go. It's not supposed to be upside down. Um, and how to reset the filter minder with the button right there. This silver box here on the passenger side valve cover, let's go over to the medium duty truck and we'll see it in a little better view. All right, we just climbed up and I'm gonna get into position. Here's the EGR cooler. You guys can see how far back it stretches onto the passenger valve cover. It is kind of cumbersome to remove at times. Um, I've had to do them when they're hot. Uh, it will uh, leak all over you. But uh, on the front of it, that is our EGR valve. If you guys can differentiate the metals here. So this is the cooler. And you see we got two pieces here. Right underneath my finger. Well, I can, right here. Okay, this piece here, this aluminum piece, that is the EGR cooler bypass. And then everybody, all the six liter, remember your your dreaded EGR valve problems we had? Well, we don't have these kind of problems on these trucks. These are EGR valve. That bolts to the front of the bypass, which is then bolted to the whole cooler. Um, definitely a different view. Sitting up here on the 650, 750, you guys can uh, check that out. Um, see the difference in the intake. Really like the way this one looks. Kind of reminds me of the SPE one. And then here's that new turbo actuator, all electronic, no more oil controlled. Something you can't see when this engine is in the pickup just because you freaking can't see. But since we're up here, um, if you're on the driver's side of the engine, you guys are gonna notice your fuel filter. Um, I go over the replacement for that. Um, really easy, uh, no brainer, something you guys need to keep up on because I have a feeling that these filters are catching fire because the individuals are not changing this accordingly. Even though they may be changing it, may not be enough, but this is trapping, this is trapping so much uh, contaminants that, uh, or not contaminants, the, the media is getting so full that this is actually splitting and then causing uh, an issue. So make sure you're not going to be splitting fuel filters, leaking fuel, because you don't want your uh, 
your comprehensive insurance to have to kick in because of owner operator error. That's not good. You guys can see the dipstick is way different here on the 650, 750 application. Uh, the dipstick is coming out that way on the driver's side. Both trucks are gonna have a couple of EGR pipes. Nothing uh, you per se are gonna have to worry about because um, that's pretty much removed when you're doing a repair and uh, for quite a while during ownership, you're not gonna have to be removing that uh, just because there's not gonna be any need for you to. So coming back over here to the pickup, you guys can see the oil dipstick indicator. That one was coming you know, way out here. This has got the six speed, that one's got the 10 speed, so we have no uh, dipstick tube. For the trans or the indicator, I'm thinking I should get a video on how to check your trans fluid on your 10 speed because I know that's gonna come up. Uh, people are gonna wanna know, you know, how, why, what do, what do you guys do? Brake reservoir, gonna be hidden behind the uh, primary degas bottle. We have here our upfitter switch fuses. You guys wanna hook stuff up on your uh, 17 through 19, you guys are up over here. We have power steering fluid right here. Has a little uh, indication where min and max is. If any of you guys are wondering what this silver box is, this is part of our emissions uh, cooling system circuit. And it is the intercooler. That is what is cooling our charge of air. When air comes in our air filter, goes into our turbocharger, gets compressed, gets hot, comes in this hot side pipe, gets cooled, air to liquid, we have coolant lines here, and then once it gets cooled, it goes out of our cold side charge air cooler tube, past our charge air cooler temp sensor, back into the lower intake, which is uh, has a throttle body here to control uh, EGR flow back into here, but uh, once it goes into the intake manifold, it goes uh, into uh, obviously uh, the engine via the upper intake manifold and uh, into the valve cover intake holes because this is a reverse uh, exhaust flow because our exhaust manifolds and turbo are all sitting here in the valley and are not traditionally on the outside like the rest of our our V8s are. So a little different setup. Um, I particularly have no issues working with it. I, I think it's a great design. Um, keeps all that heat in the center of the engine. The heat is uh, what is going to be uh, concentrating right by, by our turbo. Be more efficient. And all that heat sitting on top of the engine is also right next to your closed crankcase ventilation box. You guys, when you change the fuel filter, you're just like, oh, what's this black box sitting over here? I did a video talking about SPE's uh, CCV uh, reroute <clears throat> and it is uh, removing that box from the engine you guys can check that out at your leisure and decide what you guys want to do uh, it is an emissions component it doesn't have any sensors in it although the older trucks did have but were deleted uh, later in production because that sensor was no longer uh, needed and doesn't matter it does have a serviceable filter in there like I said, make sure to check that video out so you can uh, replace that filter accordingly. If you do, if you don't have it, uh, you'll be able to decide uh, after watching that. Moving over here to the fuel door, um, purchasing a new diesel, you guys may not know or understand what the DEF is. The DEF is what is used uh, in the reductant system to help reduce our emission uh, output value out the tailpipe because that's a big thing with these uh, diesels now look at these tires oh boy um, and another, another thing <clears throat> just because this reminded me just because these were stuck down if you have power deployed running boards I want you guys to look in the owner's manual and I'll uh, try to make sure to remember to put a link in, in the description of that video there is actually maintenance for these hinges you see how nasty these hinges are there's actually a procedure leaving them down and cleaning these so that they do not get inhibited um, when they are deployed up and down because of corrosion and you know yada yada so don't let that be you moving down underneath the best shape in the world we have our front-facing camera 
So you guys got the 360 cameras. You guys got the camera there and a washer jet. You have a camera at each mirror. Camera here. Camera there. And a camera there. That's not a camera, that's just a light. But uh, it's a cool package. Uh, I'm gonna put a, another link to my buddies uh, in uh, Bridgeport, PA, Lin Rich over at Limitless Auto Works. He has a module now available for people who have the 360 camera to now be able to take function. When you turn the turn signal on the right side, boom, that camera comes on the infotainment. Vice versa with the left. You can monitor the in-bed fifth wheel camera, the tailgate camera, the front blue oval camera, uh, any speed. If you turn them on any time to monitor if something's uh, loose in the bed, uh, what have you. It's a good function. Well worth the price, a little expensive, but it's a feature that I know everybody would want to use um, on the Super Duty when they got 360 cameras. So uh, definitely something you guys should check out. Uh, I wish I had 360 camera when he called and told me, he's like, I got something cool for your truck. I'm like, what, 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 tell me, tell me, but you can't use it. I'm like, oh, why? Cause you don't have a 360 camera. Ah, but. Uh, I, I really want to get one. My buddy uh, DS Trucks, uh, check him out. He has the Silver 450 um, and also Workplay. He just got uh, Workplay TV. Check him out. He got a a, a 21 Antimatter Blue F450, uh, somewhat similar, you know, to this. You know, it's a 450, but it was uh, it's a brand new 21. And um, this I love for 450s. 450s, uh, you you see that thing rolling down the road. Uh, it is a monster truck. We just got commented today uh, while we were filming uh, in the park. Park. Uh, a couple of ladies went by. Those trucks are huge. <laughs> it was pretty funny, but uh, yeah, that's pretty much going to cover it for this video. Like I said, I wanted to just go over some things with you guys regarding pretty much when you take ownership of your truck and you do this and you're like mind blown because you don't know what to look at. I'm breaking it down for you guys. I want you to be educated. I want you guys to know everything there is about this so that you guys can be on the road to success. Minimal breakdowns just for maintenance and keeping um, you know you on the road, making money because that's what these things do all day, every day. All right, you guys, tell me what you think about this in the comment section below. What did you like? What you didn't like? What do you want to add? I got a lot of good comments uh, adding awesome, awesome uh, additions to you know the material I'm putting out with everybody else's uh, you know experience. Tell me what you think. Get on the podcast. Let's talk trucks. Remember to like, comment, sub, share, and I'll catch you guys all next time. See. You.